right, we're rolling? Yep. All right. This is my review of the Rogue RM100A. I have owned this mandolin for five years. Does it stay in tune? No. Would I ever play it live? No. But I love this thing. I would give this thing five out of five stars. Highly recommend it. I believe that right now this is selling for about a hundred bucks, brand new. Uh, I bought it just to have something to have in the car that I didn't need a case for. I just leave it in the car, hot, cold, bouncing around the car, doesn't matter. I just needed something that, that I could access anytime so that I could practice wherever I happen to be. I have been taking this mandolin backpacking for the last three years as well. And I've been strapping it to my backpack and going on long hikes with it and leaving it out in, in the rain and in the sun. And it just gets beat up. It's in pretty rough shape right now, but still sounds pretty good for a budget mandolin. This mandolin, even though it's very, very cheap, actually sounds like a mandolin. Most mandolins in that one to $200 price range sound really boring, kind of like a, a bad acoustic guitar, just higher. This one actually still has that mandolin bark and that mandolin bite. And that's what makes a mandolin sound the way it does. It's got that punchy mid range tone. Check this out. The intonation is pretty good for a low budget mandolin. Uh, and it plays well all the way up the fretboard. Here's an open G chord. Not bad, a little harsh, but it's in tune. And let's play that same chord an octave higher. That's pretty good intonation. It's not perfect. I could probably adjust it and make it better if I wanted to. Mandolin players always want to know about the chop. So there's the chop. You don't want to play this loud. You don't want to hit the strings hard. It'll go out of tune really fast. <laughs> it's, it is a little bit harsh, but it is a real mandolin tone. And we have actually recorded some songs outside and we featured them on our full length adventure videos. So check out these clips. Not bad, right? My other mandolin at, at home is a Gibson, and that's a $3,000 mandolin. Of course, it sounds much better than this one. Does it sound $3,000 better? No, this is a, actually a better value. I have removed the tail cover just to save a little weight for when I'm backpacking. I put a lot of tape right here to keep this from vibrating. I did break this mandolin once. I have broken the bridge. I was hiking with it and it was on my backpack and I was ducking under this low branch and it got hit and this bridge actually broke. I shoved a twig right in there <laughs> and that's what's holding the bridge together and holding it up and keeping it from collapsing. It's just some random little twig that I shoved in there like last year or the year before. The craziest thing about this mandolin, I have never changed the strings on this thing. I was going to when they eventually broke, but they never broke. And I kind of like the way these old strings sound on this old kind of crummy budget mandolin. I think they work really good. I'm afraid that if I put new strings on it, that it's gonna mess everything up or make it harsh or something. So I'm gonna just keep the original strings on here, these five, six year old strings for as long as I can. At this point, I'm maybe just even a little bit superstitious about it. <laughs> could you jam with this with people? Sure. Could you play it live? I guess. You don't wanna hit those strings hard. It does go out of tune pretty easily and it is a pain in the butt to tune, but it's the best mandolin I've ever purchased. 
dollar for dollar <laughs> and I have a Gibson at home. So that says something. If you're in the market for a budget mandolin, you wanna start learning how to play or you just want something that you can beat up and it'll still work, get you a Rogue RM100A. That's all I gotta say about that.